My name is Bart Verswijvel. I have been a secondary school teacher for about 30 years in Belgium, Flanders. In this course, we will explore visions of the future classroom. So, without further ado, let's get started. Since the beginning of human existence, people have always passed on their skills, their values and traditions to the next generation. The way education was organized in the past differs from what we have now. Either education was private and only for the rich, like in ancient Greece and Rome, or it was organized by monasteries and by the church, like in the Middle Ages. Education also quite often took place in informal ways. Craftsmen learned their trade in the workplace. Formal and compulsory education for all, as we know it now, has not existed for very long. In most cases, the government, instead of churches and monasteries, is now in charge to organize formal education and to define the curriculum. Since the Industrial Revolution, we have mass production in factories. The Industrial Revolution had consequences for education. While the parents were out in the factories, the kids were sent to school. It's really striking to see the similarities between schools of that time and the factories for mass production. The way children were positioned and how they were supposed to behave in a classroom corresponds with the life of an old mass production factory. In the society of today, many of the activities that workers had to do in the old factories have been taken over by machines and computers. Factories and workplaces have changed. New technology has been introduced, so workers needed new skills. Maybe this transition also needs to take place in the classroom. Society has changed profoundly in this digital age. Our students also need new skills. Sticking to just a traditional type of classroom with its typical positioning of students might no longer be adequate. There's nothing wrong with teacher-led activities like these, but this should not be the only model to organize learning. The physical environment has a huge impact on the way learning activities are delivered and it also influences the outcomes for the students. If we, for instance, have a look at some ways of positioning the students in the classroom, you could see the differences and you could reflect on the consequences for the learners and for the learning activity. This is what we would call the grid structure. Many teachers prefer this type for reasons of classroom management. Organizing your students in rows is more or less the same. This one is the hue shape, which allows the students to maintain eye contact with their peers. Here we see separate tables for groups of students. You could even go one step further and offer more flexibility to students. It's quite common that students in primary education have more flexibility and that secondary schools keep the traditional classroom setting. Primary school environments tend to use more collaborative strategies. There are many parameters that have an influence on teaching. One is also the role that we give to students and teachers. Are students just the audience of the teacher? Or do we give students an audience? Do we give our students the freedom to define their own goals? Do we involve technology and do we allow students to bring their own device? Do we promote outdoor learning? Another parameter is the way we deal with the curriculum, with the academic content. You could say that most schools, especially secondary schools, are full of boxes. Each one of these boxes contain one subject, one age group and one time slot. This academic segregation of subjects might not correspond with the reality of daily life. And do we always need a teacher to be present to learn? Constant changes in the workplace will be part of the rest of our lives. We should therefore prepare our students to become lifelong learners. Roles must be redefined. Teachers can communicate with students in different ways than with the traditional chalk and talk. Students must get ownership of learning. Flexible classroom spaces have the potential of incorporating more learning styles. Flexibility is crucial in regards to physical learning spaces. 
schools and classrooms should provide the conditions to build 21st century skills. They should enhance lifelong learning.